In this lecture, we will be looking at the characteristics of relational databases. Um, so I've given you some resources here to refer to, which is chapter seven, the relational data model. And this is um, the chapter seven, the relational data model. It talks about relational databases, explains about technology such as tables and columns and records and also talks about the properties of tables, which we will be talking a little bit more about. I've also given you a link that more specifically explains the properties of relational tables. It's important that you understand what these properties are for relational databases or relational tables, because with relational database, these are some properties that are important for us to understand as we learn about how we can organize and design and create relational databases. So an entity is an object in the real world with an independent existence um, that can be differentiated from other objects. So in relational databases, we are keeping track of entities and we do that using tables. So an entity defines the broad aspect or the fact that we are trying to keep track of. It's like a theme. It can be an object with physical existence such as a lecturer, student, car, product, or it could also be something with a conceptual existence such as a course, a job, a position. So we have to think about what do we want to keep track of in databases and we think about broader themes such as students, faculty. Okay, these are the things and this is what we call as entities. So the characteristics of what makes a relational table. Now all tables are not relational tables because you can put data in a two dimensional table, but it doesn't make it a relational table. There are certain characteristics that need to be present for a table to be a relational table. And we're going to look at these definitions. Um, values in a table need to be atomic, which means that it can contain only one value. So there shouldn't be any repeating groups. So that's what atomic means. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail. So I've given you a link here um, that provides you with an example of what it means that the values need to be atomic. So in this particular case, we are looking at an example of a table called product. And when you look at here, we have three fields here for the table product ID, color, and price. And these are your records. You have five records in this table. But when you look at values of color, it says red comma green. Here you see yellow comma blue. So this wouldn't be atomic. Um, so that would not, so it would not be considered a relational table because values that are atomic can contain only one value. And in this case, we have red comma green. So it has multiplicity or it has multiple values associated in one record. So that would mean it's not atomic. And so it wouldn't be atom. I mean, values are atomic and with a relational table, it needs to be atomic. So that is one important characteristic. The second one is column values need to be of the same kind, which means they have to be the same data type. So if you're going to keep track of product IDs as numbers here, then all the values for product IDs need to be of numeric form. You cannot put an A or a B or a C here unless you define it of that particular type of data type. So it has to conform to be of the similar data type. And that's an important characteristic of a data relational tables. Each row is unique, which means that you cannot have no two rows that are exactly identical in all the fields. The sequence of columns are insignificant. It means that if you're looking at a table product, if you were to put price as your first column, followed by color or product ID, it should make no difference to the table. So that's why the sequence shouldn't matter because you can always sort your column and the same applies for the rows. It doesn't matter that one row needs to be the first row or the second row because again, we can always manipulate the data in our table by sorting it. Lastly, each column should have a unique name. So you cannot have two columns that have the same name in a relational table. So in this particular case, 
we have product ID. You cannot have another product ID column. You cannot have another column that's called product ID. All of these column names or the field names or attribute names need to be unique. So these are important characteristics of a relational table and it's important that you understand these definitions. So this is an example of a relational table and it is relational because it satisfies the conditions of a characteristics of relation tables. We have values that are atomic. You don't have multiple values in a single column. And if we look at it, we're keeping track of the column fields are all of the same data type. Um, it doesn't matter if we were to shift the columns um, to a different position. If telephone was after driver's license or last name was at the very end, it wouldn't make a difference to how this data is being organized. The same applies for um, the field, um, the columns and the rows. Can, the rows also doesn't have to be in a particular order. You can sort it by last name or first name or telephone and it shouldn't make a difference. We don't have columns that have exactly identical values. And so we can say that since this particular table here meets all the characteristics of a relational table, we can say that this is in relational, it's a relational table. Now in this particular example, this is also data organized in a table, but this would not be considered a relational table because it doesn't satisfy the property that says column values need to be of the same kind. So if we come here and look um, at this table, we are going to see under telephone, you have um, a data type that looks like an email here. And when you look under driver's license, you have a name field here. So this wouldn't satisfy that property of um, the column values being of the same data type. So this would not be considered a relational table. Now, is this a relation? Now, when we look at it, we can see that the data types are of the same kind in all the columns here. And uh, we can see that the column names are unique. But if you were to look carefully at this table, you're going to notice that you have two columns or two records that have identical values, which is 77890567 for you, Tori, with this number. And the very last um, record here has the same identical value for driver's license, last name, first name, and telephone. So this would not be a relational table because you have two records that have identical values in all the field names. So keep in mind, it has to have identical values. And so you could have two people with the same last name. If their driver's license is different, that's fine. But in this particular case, all values of the fields for that record is identical. So it doesn't satisfy that condition that each record needs to be unique. Therefore, this would not be a relational table. Now, is this a relation? Why or why not? Again, this would not be a relation because the values are not atomic. So you have color here, you have red comma green. So it doesn't satisfy the atomic properties, which says values are atomic. It needs to contain only one value. So this table does not satisfy that condition. Therefore, it is not a relational table. So keep in mind that all of these characteristics need to be met for a table to be considered. That's one of the basic, and you can again improve the quality of a relational table, but these are some basic characteristics that need to be present for a table to be identified as a relational table. So when we are representing relations or tables, we cannot always draw them as a two-dimensional table. So we use a particular format for um, representing table names. So we call the relational table name in all capital letters, and then we include the field names that are separated by commas. So let's look at an example for that here. Here we have customer, which is the name of the table. And then you have customer ID, customer first name, last name, customer telephone, and email as the fields or attributes of a table. So this is one way, of course, you're not seeing the actual records, but it's giving you information on the table name and how many fields are present in the table and what are the names of those fields. Example, another example is account here. 
you have account number, account type, account start date, and account balance as the field names or attribute names in these tables. And of course, this is another way to represent a relation or a table in relational format. So, so that's important to keep in and finally, we also want to make sure we understand what database schema refers to. It refers to the layout of the tables. Um, it shows you the fields and the relationships. So in this particular case, this is a screenshot from a database schema that is taken from Microsoft Access. And as you can see here, when you look at your schema, you are able to know how many, um, how many tables you have. You have three tables here, bike you have rental and you have customer, and you also know how many fields you have in each of these tables here, and you can know which tables are related together. So we can say that the rental table is related to the bike and the customer table. We can also see which fields are common in both the tables. You can see that in the rental table, you have bike ID, which also, and the bike table also has bike ID. Similarly, in customer table, you have driver's license and in the rental table, you have driver's license. So driver's license and driver's license are used to relate rental and customer and bike ID in the rental and bike ID in the bike table is used to relate bike and rental together. So this is just a, a definition for another term. It's called a schema or it provides a layout to tell you how the tables are related together, what's the name of the table, what are the fields in the table and the relationship between these tables.